two, game number two of the three game hack quarterfinals as my computer decides that is a good time to minimize because XSplit is a bitch. But anyway, we have uh, Navi vs. EG, game number two. And with me again is Blightwind from GhostGamers.net. Uh, and yeah, game one was pretty interesting, you know, seeing some shouting, but what was really came down was that Navi's team fight just couldn't match up to EG's. Their Wisp was unable to do pretty much anything, and unfortunately Dendi couldn't get the positioning off. So we'll see if Navi can correct these flaws. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, uh, we had talked about it in game one. The Wisp really doesn't accomplish anything if you don't have vision, if you don't have map control. So um, we'll probably see them go for more, like a, more of a safe support, try and scoop up that Jakiro, and then maybe something like a Lesh or... So we're going to unpause in 3, 2, 1, go. And again, if Navi loses this, they are out of the tournament. Um, this is probably the only series we're going to cast from GMAC for now, because it's already like a week old. So <laughs> I'm sure you guys want to be caught, but hey, SMM is coming up very soon. You want You going to cast any of those games? Uh, I don't know. I am I have picked up one of the tickets for the Defense 3, so I might try and do some of that. Uh along with uh, maybe some Gosu League stuff. That yep. there's, I think there's still a couple matches, so... Yep, definitely a lot of Dota to cast in the near future. But anyway, into this game. Looks like uh, I didn't actually unpause, so I am not very smart. Why are you not work spacebar? <laughs> Alright, what time are you at, dude? 56. Alright, I'm at 56. Go. 59, 1 minute, 101, 102. Yep. Yeah, I'm like one second behind you, but... Okay. <laughs> anyway, Navi have the first pick, and they decide to ban out the Magnetar. Magnetar, probably the best off lane hero. Probably also the best team fight hero. And uh, he's pretty ridiculous. I mean, now EG bans out the other best off lane hero in the form of Bounty Hunter track. Definitely is going to get in there for the next upcoming patch. And it's weird, because I looked at Bounty Hunter in the last... And all his changes, and actually he's never received a nerf as long as he's been out, but I think his time is finally going to come. Yeah, we might see some kind of reduction in uh, track gold, or maybe even like something, a cooldown or a range adjustment. Like, track just has to be changed in some way, because as it stands now, there is literally no downside to having him. Uh, he, with that stealth, he can just sit in lane, soak up experience, get level 6 very, very easily. And then once he's six, he just makes up his farm through tracks. So uh, I, I agree with you. Him and Magnus, I think we'll see some some slight tweaking in the very least come next big patch. Yep. And meanwhile, Navi says they have the first pick. They have the option. Uh, most likely, they want EG to ban out the Batrider, but they might ban out themselves. Uh, looks like Navi bans out the Darks here. So EG probably gonna bat out the Batrider here, or maybe they're hoping that Navi won't first pick it so Demon can get his hands on that, but Batrider is usually the stable ban in this scenario. Uh, of course, other strong heroes that could receive the ban uh, in the second round ban phase, I guess Rubik, sometimes, Jakiro, once in a blue moon, heroes like that. Yeah, we could even see something like a... Uh, undying, a, Undying a, season. Undying, undying, Templar Assassin, those are both very popular. And, I mean, with a, a very powerful mid like Templar Assassin, you usually don't want Den be getting his hands on that. But they do go with the Bat Rider. Nothing surprising there. I mean, it's it's not a hero. If you have... Uh, if you're second pick, you never, ever want Bat Rider to make it through. Yeah, he's just too good at laning. And uh, now he picks up the Templar Assassin. So, gonna have their mid soul presence being held by Dendi already. And, uh, EG, they could try to pick around this. They could, I guess, pick up the Queen of Pain. Uh, but they might not want to use their first two picks, but most likely we're going to see a Twin Eye Dragon, and I guess a Sven, because Sven really working out for them, but uh, definitely a Jakiro, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Definitely we're going to see a Jakiro. I mean, I do like the Templar Assassin. That'll def pretty much guaranteed to be for Dendi, and it's a much safer pick than the Shadow Fiend they went with last time. Uh, Templar Assassin just has way more lane presence, and just, I think, contributes a lot more earlier than the Shadow Fiend does. So I think they might go for a bit more of a mid-game, try and match this mid-game style that EG has been doing. Because uh, they, they figure uh, we go super late game uh, up against some heroes like Sven and 
Jakiro, because they'll just tear down our base before, like, an anti-mage or a faceless void gets farmed up. Yep, and <laughs> there's the Jakiro Sven. Yeah. Man, it's... Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Fear is most likely going to be handling that Sven. Beat is probably going to handle Jakiro. So, pretty much an evil genius not really going for anything too unconventional, but hey, they still have three picks to go for something crazy. Uh, surprised to see no Undying being picked up just yet, but usually, even if teams, uh, ban it, sometimes they won't just, uh, pick them regardless, but still, Undying, a very powerful hero, and... Let's see what good long lanes are still left in the pool for Navi. I guess Windrunner, and that's it. Beastmaster? Uh, Wind and Runner, Undying, I guess. Beastmaster, you could, like, I I don't ever think I've ever seen them run it, but uh, you could do a lone druid. Yeah, a bit I mean, tougher on the... Out of favor, but... bit tougher on the Radiant long lane for Navi. Yes, yes. But EG, definitely, Demon, was well known in Dota 1 for his Beastmaster. And uh, he is long player for long lane player for EG, so EG uh, definitely have a couple options for their long lane. Meanwhile, I feel like Navi their long lane a little bit more limited beyond the radiant, unless they pick up something like a bat rider. But it's already been banned. Yeah, I, I think really knowing Light of Heaven's playstyles, we'll see either a Broodmother because he's known for running that, or most likely the Wind Runner, just because I mean, yeah, Light, Light of, of Heaven Runners. <laughs> enough said. Enough said. Yeah. As uh, Navi really taking a lot of time, they're gonna pick up the Void for a most and the Ventral Spirit. So I guess that might be a preemptive counter pick to the Enigma. So just saying, all right, don't pick up the Enigma at all, Milk. We're tired of your Black Hole shenanigans. And also getting that damage increase for Faceless Void while he's in the Chronosphere definitely will help. Uh, Terror will also help. Really helps amplify Void, especially Void who doesn't really have too much damage or too much fight presence in the early game besides Chronosphere. Um, and also can swap, I guess, Sven out of position. But most likely, uh, probably not the best hero for, not the best line for go to to go for an aggressive swap in this scenario. I don't think. No, definitely don't want to swap that Sven. Um, and I, yeah, I think it's mostly for the synergy with that faceless void. And I, I have mixed feelings about this fa like the faceless void, because last like last game they tried to go for a late game pick in the shadow fiend and it didn't really work out. Void is a bit of a safer pick, but. At the same time, EG has been playing just pure mid game, so they don't want, they're not going to really let you get to that place where Void just tears apart your entire team. Yeah, I mean, they have a bit more of a mid game presence in the TA, but now they're facing up against Undying, who's probably the king of the mid game, just because of Tombstone and Decay. And uh, EG, knowing that they won't pick up the Ningwa, just decide to ban out outright. Pretty smart decision against the Venge. Meanwhile, Navi banning out the Wisp. So we'll look at EG right now. Uh, going to be. I guess Undying, Demon, Long Lane, but it's a bit tougher on the... I feel like it's a bit easier on the rain side for Undying, Long Lane. Uh, but, yeah, I'll be interested to see how they're going to lane this. They might do an aggressive challenge as well with Sven, Jikiro, Undying. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, Undying in a tri lane is probably one of the biggest bullies ever. Um, and largely, especially in like a tri lane versus tri lane situation, because everyone stays hovering around that like level 3 and 4 mark for so, so long. So Undying is able to just flex that giant spirit power and just slap you out of lane, giving this fan a whole bunch of room. So we'll have to see what their uh, last two picks are, and then it'll open up whether it's a long lane or a tri lane Undying. Yeah, especially against Avenge support, because Avenge has 400 range and not enough mana to cast a Magic Missile twice. It used to be the case that Magic Missile costs 90 mana, but now it costs 110 mana at level 1, so she can only cast it once without clarity, uh, unless she clarities up in between. So Venge, not really the best lane support, especially with the Void, because he doesn't even have a stun. So, Navi, they might have to be careful how they win this, because EG, they might have the makings of an extremely powerful aggressive tri lane, and EG, nice call, they ban out the Broodmother, banning out Stare of Light of Heaven's Heroes. So, uh, Light of Heaven might be in for a rough time. Yeah, and I honestly would not be surprised at all if the second band, like the last band from EG, is a Windrunner. Just saying, you know, we're going to shut down Light of Heaven in any way we can, just because we don't want to have that team fight flexibility to help delay the game until this Void can become useful. Yeah, definitely. Meanwhile, Navi bans out Rubik, so they went for... Uh, two support bands and a mid-solo band. Uh, 
but really, Queen of Pain's still in the pool, and I think Queen of Pain fights TA. She wins against TA. I mean, it's not as bad a matchup against Batrider, but she still wins. So, a bit surprised to see Navi not betting out Queen of Pain in this scenario. And I think EG, they're going to pick up Queen of Pain. Probably. Uh, yeah, uh, I would say that's probably the, the most likely one. I mean, Chen knocked out uh, as a respect towards Puppy. So we'll have to see what they pick up for him. I mean, there's nothing, none of his really signatures left anymore. Yeah, I think Puppy will probably have to play the Venge as we do see the Windrunner. So EG uh, picked their poison. Uh, I guess they decide to give up the Windrunner. Windrunner does take a decent amount of levels and amount of farm in order to really get going. So I guess uh, EG, they want to end the game before Light Heaven really becomes a problem. Uh, but if it is a soul versus solo and Tron versus Tron, Live Heaven will find his farm, so that is one thing. That's not in EG's favor. But meanwhile, EG, they're going to have to try to pick up their mid soul that can deal with the Dendi's Tay. I think Queen of Pain would be the best option, but they could potentially run, I guess, the dual lane mid, and uh, that's another way to beat TA. I feel like TA in the landing phase can be beaten, but it's when it comes to the mid-game phase, that's when TA really shines. Yeah, yeah, it's um, really her early game strength is simply in the fact that most people can't easily burn through the refraction so she doesn't get bullied out of lane and it allows her to get a decent amount of farm and then she can turn into a kind of a mid-game terror um and i mean so uh, yeah I, I kind of agree with you that the queen of pain would be the most sensible pickup just because she's really unless they went with like a venomancer or something crazy like that uh that's the only real counter to ta that will help kind of shut her down in the early game Yep, so Beastmaster Demon most likely going to play that in the long lane. So I'm guessing that this is going to be a very offensive trial lane. It's not going to be against the other team's trial lane. They're just going to try to push towers down as fast as possible. And, uh, yeah, so expecting to see another mid soul. Demon could do the mid soul of Beastmaster, as he's been known to do in Dota 1. But it's been a while since he's done that, I think. Yeah, and I mean, against a... A TA, I don't really think that would work out. I mean, you would ha you do would have the bo uh, the boar poison to help tear down a little bit, but oh, and that's a I know Puppy has figure like been running Lycan now as just kind of a pulling, but that is still a rather shocking pick. I think Lycanthrope is incredibly underrated. I've seen teams win with him. They it just takes a little bit more risk in terms of jungling him, but he still gets his items maybe like one or two minutes later. So I'm still puzzled to see why Lycanthrope has fallen off the map so hard. And I still, still think he's a really, really powerful hero. But uh, it's not only the best laning partners for Void and Venge, but I guess they predict since uh, Demon's going to be playing the Beastmaster, uh, their lane will be safe. Yeah, I, I agree with you that like in like come the late game, once he gets his items up, I, his late game wasn't changed at all. All the nerfs really were focused on his early game. Um, it just struck me as a little odd as where exactly he would fit into here. Because, yeah, kind of like you commented on, maybe something like an Enigma would have been a bit better to help uh, gank for the Void and give him a bit more breathing room. Whereas this Lycan is really just going to be pulling creep camps and trying to get his own items up. Yeah, I mean... It'll be interesting to see how Puppy will lane this. I think he'll just farm up and uh, just try to get that as fast as possible and just hope that he won't be under too much pressure. But Fear picked up the clink, so J.O. is going to be playing the center, so it's going to be a dual lane mid, most likely. And it's going to be Melk on the top lane with Undying, so... I'm guessing it's going to be e Fear and Melk on the top lane. Uh... I guess we'll just go over the players. Fear is playing the Clinks, Jail is going to be playing the Sven, Demon's going to be playing the Beastmaster, Beatiz is playing the Jakiro, and Melk is playing the Undying. Yeah, and then for Na'Vi, we have Puppy on the Lycanthrope, Sasha Gray, also known as Havost, on that Faceless Void, Dendi on his classic mid as the TA, and then Light of Heaven playing the Windrunner, and Arzart on as the Vengeful Spirit. So the laning, yeah, um, laning's going to be a little bit weird here. Yeah, uh, top lane... Clink's versus Windrunner with the help of Undying. Uh, at least Undying will get more experience, and Clink's can keep Windrunner out of the lane. Especially if Undying gets like one point to solar, then Clink's should just be just fine, because uh, he can just heal up. And Burning Arrows will put a real number against the Light of Heaven. You know, Dueling mid jail and Beatiz versus Dendi. Dendi won't really have too good of a time, and even he'll just be Ancient Stacking. So I think EG 
pretty much has got this in the laning phase, and that does not really bode well for Navi. But hopefully, of course, Navi, a very experienced team, they've definitely come back from worse situations than this, and they might pull off something uh, unexpected by me at the very least. But I like EG's lanes at the moment, and meanwhile, Navi's lanes seem a bit too passive. Yeah, I I kind of agree with you in the sense that EG's lanes just seem a little like safer and more solid. Navi's lanes can definitely work, and you definitely see kind of the mindset behind them, but they, they've been countered a little bit, and they're a little bit more unstable. And if they lose the laning phase, then they're definitely going to have a rough game, like rest, rough rest of the game. Uh, whereas with EG's lineup, really Clinks is the only one that uh, needs a whole lot of farm to become useful. Sven, with his ult, even if he doesn't have a whole lot of items, is still semi-useful. Roar, and then the Tombstone is really what you pick up on Dying and Beastmaster for. So they don't need a ton of farm. Yep, as we see Puffy just standing out with the Lowe's, has an early pair of Centiwards just to scout out um, if they're going to go for... Uh, if they block off the level 1 creep camp, as is so common these days, against uh, powerful jungle, or even to prevent against rain creep pulling in the mid lane. Uh, meanwhile, Dendi, saving up for the fast bottle. Sasha Gray has Coiling Blade, so not really too many out of the ordinary items. Meanwhile, Demon looks like he's saving up for fast ball, so actually, it's going to be Demon in the mid lane. And an aggressive trial in bottom with uh, Fear and Melk. So I wasn't expecting this. And uh, that does give Navi, I think, a bit more of better laning presence, just because it's going to be solo Clinks against Windrunner. And Windrunner does quite well against Clinks just with the power of Windrun. Um, but they're just going to crush this tri lane, and Void will not get any farm. Yeah, yeah, the the Void unfortunately won't get a whole lot of farm, and it also puts Dendi in a nicer spot too, because that dual lane was would certainly mess up his early game, and he can pretty much hold his own against the solo Beastmaster. I mean, he can pretty much just Refraction Axes, and that's about all the Beastmaster will be able to do to him. Um, Whereas, you know, the if they did a Jakiro Sven trial or dual lane, then the dual breath would have eaten through refraction and he would have had a lot play a lot more uh passive. Yep. As uh one second, put him pause the game, be right back. Alright, I'm back. Okay. Alright, ready to unpause? Yep. 3, 2, 1, unpause. So, yeah. Uh, Void already just saying, screw this lane. Uh, maybe they're going to do a lane swap and put... What's Void doing? I'm not 100% sure. Um, maybe they'll rotate him mid and have him just go up against this solo Beastmaster. Now it looks like um, he's going a thousand miles. They might just put Light of Heaven on the bottom lane. Yeah. But Void losing it's, a lot of experience and a lot of farm through this. It's the new meta of just roaming Void, level one. Yeah, he's very reliable. He's just gonna gank. With that 25% slow and his auto attack. Very, very strong. Meanwhile, farming Venge, the best. Yep. <laughs> um, no, I, I certainly imagine we're gonna see Light of Heaven rotate down to this bottom lane. And they'll just let uh, Void solo against this, against Fear. Yeah. And yeah, that's exactly what's happening. I mean, the Windrunner won't get a whole lot of farm against this trialing, but can at least do oh, a bit of Oh, Light of Heaven time. is in a lot of trouble as he teleports to the bottom lane. Ice Path going to hold people in place as Melk has full mana. Light of Heaven is going to take the fall. One more decay, and Melk does pick up the first blood. And uh, <laughs> this is, uh, I mean, Void won't really get too much farm against Clinks. He'll get more farm than he would up against the Trilane, but still, he's going to be under a miserable amount of pressure against the Clinks. You can already see, one point of backtrack is not going to be enough. And meanwhile, this Trilane is pretty much screwed, so yeah, EG seems to have a pretty solid position in this game thus far, but still, I mean, Deli is probably one of the best mid players in all of Europe, and we'll see if he can get his team back on track in the mid game. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and he has a decent lane 
in this, um, and yeah, you're you're right that Void will get a lot more farm against uh, Fear than he did bottom lane. I mean, anything is better than what he was getting, which was absolutely nothing. Yeah, as Arzar, after taking the fall on the bottom lane, is migrating top, but Clinks outranges Arzar, and Arzar is only level 1, so it's not going to be the best time in terms of harassing for Arzar, and uh, going to have to rely on Havos backing up with that time mock in order to get to an aggressive position. You know, Light of Heaven is going to be under constant pressure. Actually, Arzar didn't die. Light of Heaven died. And meanwhile, looks like a puppy. Not too sure what he's doing either, as uh, he's just rolling around as well. But he is level 3 at the very least, so he's getting some farm. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, I don't really know what exactly Puppy's doing. I mean, there is one ward, but they could have used, like, he has sentries, so he could have easily countered that. So I don't know why he's going for this really aggressive jungle on their side, where uh, when he could just take the safer route, because what they need is to get farm and farm fast considering how badly they've done for the la first like well four minutes about now yep as uh we're seeing a very very old school 0.48 b lane sven jakiro as melk has room to the top lane to give hovo some backup as one point is up so fear will just be fine in terms of getting healed back up you know other than uh without the third of undying can play a bit more aggressive so so far the lanes are starting to stabilize eg does have an early laning advantage um, but now the lanes are starting to become more stable, but again, uh, Havos is going to be under a lot of pressure as a two-man decay going to drain so much his HP. Yeah, like, if you, if you look at things now, I'm, farm levels aren't actually, they're actually not as bad as I thought they would be. It's 12 for, uh, Havos and 15 on Fear. So he's doing better than I thought. I thought there would be a much bigger gap, but... Uh, looks like Puppy is do trying to do a little bit of the mid lane pulling just to give Dendi a bit of a safer spot. Beastmaster has his bottle up. So does uh, TA. Yep, so looks like the teams are ready. Just to make sure we're still synced up, I'm at 20, 27, 28. Oh, I'm, I am actually slightly behind you. 30, 31. As a. Uh, yep, ours are clearing up very, very passive game thus far. Uh, Demon Spanish stand on himself. Quite well in lane, has two points in the Call of Wild, so he has that board drain some of Dendi's refraction charges. But Dendi is uh, pretty far ahead in terms of experience, as is to be expected. And now he's going to put a lot of reliance on Dendi and Puppy to come through in the mid-game. Yeah, I mean, the, the one benefit is that of all the lanes that are struggling, it's not their mid-game one. So they should be able to handle themselves decently well. Um... And they'll just have to try and stall for a bit to allow uh, Puppy and Havos to farm up. But at the same time... Oh, have... snap. As bottom lane, of uh, Puppy just gets completely steamrolled by the mass amount of ganks that EG Ward was, uh, did spot out the movement, as uh, they have a couple wards. Uh, both spotted out the jungle movement and the rune movement, so they're able to catch Puppy, try to do something sneaky, and Puppy paid the price. Yeah, uh, unfortunately... It's EG is not a team that you want to give kind of this early advantage to because they do seem to be, at, le at least with this roster, they seem to be gods of the mid game. They, they will get some momentum and just steamroll you. Yeah, EG uh, starting to get themselves together after getting a second place in, or first place in the Root Cup and second place in the Dota 2 League uh, behind Empire. And I'm happy for that because American Dota, you know, big big supporter of American Dota as a uh, and of course it's kind of boring just to see Navi win tournament after tournament but still uh, Puppy went for the bottle just to keep his mana up and get that runes going and meanwhile Demon's gonna find himself a regen rune as Sasha Gray might be in a bit of trouble I don't think they can kill him but they're gonna put him under a lot of duress and what do you think uh, Havo should go for in this game should he go for the traditional battle fury build even though he won't get it very quickly or should he go for more of a tanky slash uh, defensive build or maybe like Vanguard into Mask Madness or something like that. Yeah, I kind of won't. I think, especially at this point, considering how delayed he's been, um, I think he should just, yeah, go for like Vanguard, Mask of Madness, and then maybe like a Maelstrom or something like that. Um, just try and get the early damage ups and like early attack speeds, then he can start shredding people as soon as he's, well, hanging around that like level 8 mark. Um, because they, they will need that early team fight because EG is going to force it upon them. 
Yep, so Puppy killed the tombstone, got himself a nice bounty of 90 gold. So uh, he's going to be pretty happy with that, but going to roam all the way back to the jungle. Uh, but more importantly, it's giving Hobo some room to farm up. And uh, Fear has 1,800 gold in the bank, going to go for that fast Oblivion Staff as soon as he can pick it up, which he does just now. Uh, meanwhile, I guess Stendi is going to probably try to get most of the way to his Blink Dire before he starts ganking. Otherwise, Demon will just push down this tower. Um, yeah, really, it's... Navi's in another awkward spot here, and I'm I'm not 100% sure on what exactly they... Like, a dis definitive plan that they should do to bring this back together. Because um, they didn't... They, it seemed like they tried to go really greedy with their draft and have a bit of mid-game, have a bit of late-game, have a bit of push with the Lycan. Like, they just kind of went all over the place. Whereas EG just said, this is what's happening, like mid-game go. Yep, Demon gonna be thwarted in his smoke gank because there was a very nicely placed observer ward by Dendi. And, uh, but at the very least, Demon will find himself a tower and Light of Heaven is not getting any farm in the meanwhile. Level 5, so he has to be points in power shot, one point in the shackle shot, and is getting some farm at the very least. Uh, but meanwhile... He's not going to have too much fun when his tower is going to be pushed. And that's going to put a lot of pressure on him as it's going to be a teleport in by Puppy as well as Arzar. But Puppy does get frozen to the ground with that ice path. Meanwhile, BDs might be in a bit of trouble. Shackle Shot does not latch on the BDs. And uh, I think they could try to defend BDs. No, Denny's here. And BDs is most certainly going to take the fall. But ran the opposite way. Nicely done by BDs. Sacrificed himself in order to save his teammates. And only ensured one casualty. Meanwhile, Melk and Fear are just camping up the top lane. Oh my, yeah. Yeah, good play by Beat is sacrificing himself. Navi finally puts themselves on the board, but they do lose that tower. And it, I mean, this uh, top tier one is not long for this world either. Uh, with the Tombstone down, we'll see a few time locks uh, by Havost, but he really can't sit here. Yep, teleport in by Dendi, as I think I'm probably still a bit ahead of you, as Dendi is going to get some nice damage onto Fear, but here comes Beatus teleporting back in, and I think uh, EG's like, alright, time to apply the pressure. We don't want to face a late game, face this void, even if he is not getting too much harm. As uh, Havost has 1k gold, we'll see if he goes for Treads or Perseverance, that will definitely tell how Havost will build his void. Has not picked up the Perseverance just yet, so uh, playing a bit more safe at this point. But I might just be saving up for the Claymore, which I don't know if would be the right move. Yeah, I don't know if... Again, I'm not a huge fan of trying to go for uh, the Battle Fury in this case, just due to the fact that... Um, yeah, EG's not going to look to go this super late game, so you aren't going to get the, full, the huge effect out of the Battle Fury. Uh, I think something like a Mask of Madness and then maybe uh, either like a Mjolnir or a, an Assault Cuirass, something like that. Just get yourself some cheap attack speed and be, uh, maximize the effectiveness of that Chronosphere. Um, yep, those double damage time walks in Chronosphere definitely uh, will probably deal with the majority of Void's damage, even if he did get a Battle Fury, but he did just end up getting tried, so definitely not easy to tell what his build is at this point. And meanwhile, Navi, they're going to let Arzar get some experience. I like this move, uh, just to try to get that aura, that swap up to high enough levels where it can actually be a factor. Because Venge, a very strong late game support, but not really the best early game support, unless she's getting a lot of ganks going. Yeah, yeah, she's really probably one of the, the best late game supports with that huge swap range, with the very like a very powerful stun, and that damage aura that will exponentially uh, add to your late game. But... Early game, she's she's really kind of a piece of trash. Like, she is basically a you know a dead weight in terms of laning. Stormhammer coming out on Puppy. He's gonna pop the ulti to try and escape there. Yeah. Uh, so nothing really happening. Couple towers going down in EG's favor, but Navi at least seems to be holding things together enough that it's not gonna spiral out of control yet. You know, Dendi uh, just ball curving it up. Uh, still no Blink Dagger. Um, if Tia is completely down in her lane, she'll have her phase Blink Dagger by like 10 minutes. But Dendi having a bit more trouble. Um, hasn't died yet at the very least. 66 and 31. Very nice lane control. Nice creep stats by Dendi. So he's still winning his lane. But uh, now it's the point where lane being phased doesn't really matter as both teams try to roam around. And Melk does have that little 4 tombstone. 
And aside from the wolves, which can get bursted down due to their much lower HP, there's not really any strong anti-tombstone measures. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, at the moment, I guess, unless you went like a very fast necro book or something like that, that in combination with Hal could probably tear down tombstone decently fast. But, uh, especially since Malak, at least from what I've seen before, has been very smart about the placement of Tombstone, has been putting it directly in uh, kind of fire, hiding in trees and stuff like that. Yep, as uh, Skype sounds a little bit buggy, so hopefully it will just drop out as Dendy's going for a very aggressive, nice bait by EG. Dendy took it completely, and he's going to pay for it with his life, and EG's going to get a tire nine, and they're going to get the push going mid. A uh, bit surprised by Dendy, uh, considering he did see at least two people, but wasn't probably expecting the third, as Demon came with the roar. And now we're going to lose another tier one tower, as EG's starting to get their mojo rolling. And like you said, once EG gets their mojo rolling, then... They pretty much start to steamroll people. Yeah, yeah, I mean, especially with heroes like Sven, uh, like Undying, who just by the basic mechanics of them are very momentum oriented. And then EG, in terms of kind of their attitude, they. Oh, uh, meanwhile, Havos on the top lane is gonna get ganked by an Orchided Clinks. The Soul Burn is gonna come in. No oh. backtrack on any of those hits. And Fear with such an early Orchid, Havos has nowhere to go. And Navi uh, looking into be a very terrible position. And this is quite surprising to say the least. Yeah, it's um, because I mean, everyone has seen Navi have rough games. But they always seem to kind of pull it together very quickly. They'll make some smart lane swaps make some smart decisions, but in this, they just seem very distracted, almost. Um, the things, Dendi getting baited out by that, you know, attempting to last hit that tower. I mean, it's understandable how it happened, but it's just very unlike Navi. Yeah, as, um, I think what you said was right, they tried to do too much of their picks. I don't think Ventral Spirit was a very strong pickup for them at all. I think it was more no, just to I prevent an Enigma counter pick by EG. And picking up in the first phase really doesn't make too much sense. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to say that is, you pick up Avenger if they've gotten their Enigma and saying, okay, fine. Because then it at least makes the Enigma uh, question doing black holes, you know. It's sort of like a Rubik pickup in that regard. You have to be very careful about your black holes, because otherwise you're just going to get uh, shut down. But by picking it up, they go, okay, fine, we'll just take something that uh, the swap doesn't matter against. If you look at all of the EG's lineup, really the only person that you want to swap is B Diz. Uh, everyone else kind of wants to already be in the middle of your team. Yeah, pretty much. As uh, Fear did attempt to gank on Arzor, but was able to escape just fine. But, I mean, Navi doesn't even have too much anti push against on their lineup. They only really have Power Shot Venge. Probably the worst, one of the worst uh, anti-pushing supports next to Lich, of course. Really, really not too sure about no. how this bench pick will work out, as it looks like EG going to take the Roshan with relative ease, unless Dendi can test it, but there is a Centaur in position, and Dendi is going to think better of it. At least Dendi has a Blink Dagger, so we'll see if they go for ganks, but again, EG knows that now his way to get back in the game is through ganks. They're smart enough team to realize that, so they're just going to, you know, stick together. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're going to go... Five Man Dota, and uh, I know a lot of people make fun of Five Man Dota as kind of with a pubby thing, but it's they do they're doing it because yeah, it's the smart. They understand they have a huge advantage. None of these people can like no, no, nobody on Navi's lineup can really win them a huge team fight. They don't have a Sand King or a oh Hyde no, Havost, Havost on the bottom lane, get another Orchid burn, oh. no backtracks. And I'm pretty sure Silence doesn't silence backtrack, but he's getting zero backtracks in any of these Orchided ganks. Yeah. No, it, it doesn't prevent it. I think on the first kill he had uh, up on top lane, he had one backtrack. But I mean, one out of six Searing Arrows doesn't really matter. And that one, there is literally none, which is really the worst gamble possible. He have level two, so it's only a 15% chance, but you still expect to see one or two. And most is actually going for that battle fair. He has a perseverance. Uh, might have been able to pick up something like the broadsword very soon, but here comes the push with that Aegis up on Jail. Doesn't even need the BKB. Uh, not even level 11 for that level 2 god strength. They're just going to push in. They have a level 4 tombstone. They're killing Void left and right. And uh, 
We'll see how Nari decides to defend this. I think if they manage to get themselves in the proposition, they can potentially pick off Melk, who is taking a lot of damage from the Wolves. Nice harassment by Puppy. Well, I'm definitely benefiting from that 50% uh, magic increase on the Wolves. Yeah, uh, you know, the Wolves in combination with the Medallion definitely allows them to kind of poke people down. But there we see Necro picked up uh, on the Beastmaster, so they're already just throwing everything they have into this push-oriented uh, like itemization and lineup. They are trying to tear down the entirety of Na'Vi's base before the uh, Lycan and before Void become even remotely useful. Yep, and Beat is dutifully stacking a giant creep camp for J.O. and the rest of his team to clear out to get a nice experience boost. Um, meanwhile, just checking out the Roshan Tiber, still about 4 minutes, so I expect EG to do some sort of push when that comes in. As, uh, it'll be interesting to see what Fear decides to go for. Will he go for the safe option into BKB? Uh, well, they're facing Avenge, they're facing a Void. Maybe I'll go a bit more greedy and go for straight MKB. Yeah, I actually think that the MKB would be a smarter thing, because like you said, there's a couple things to counter the BKB. The Chrono is the bigger one for me, like, you... Uh, you're not going to be able to right-click anyways during that, and even if you pop, pop your BKB, it's going to uh, be disabling you. So you might as well just go for something that maximizes the short few seconds of right-click you'll get when you first pop out of that uh, invis with the strafe on. Meanwhile, Malk attempting to DK the creeps, but <laughs> uh, not <yeah>. doing anything. <laughs> uh, I don't quite know what that is. Like, that's one of those I don't even understand what he would hope that would do. Yep, but meanwhile, Demon's gonna get a lot of the farm, most of, all of the farm in this scenario, not J.O. as I would have expected, but I guess I want to get that Necro 3 up as soon as possible, like you said. Um, is it on the Courier? It is, so he's gonna have Necro 2 up very, very soon, and at this stage in the game, Necro 2 will pretty much be another hero. If he manages to get Necro 3, then it's really, really gonna be difficult for Nari to even bring down those. Yeah, it's, uh, it's almost like a lone druid in that regard, if you like you get the item up early enough then it's it's yeah it's essentially having a sixth member of your team and i certainly hope that nobody like that uh, we don't see an accidental side blade onto that melee creep otherwise we'll <laughs> we will see dendy get crushed eh, maybe he might have refraction up and just completely block it as uh looks like dendy is going for a blade of alacrity um I guess going for fast Manta to stop the silence, I guess that's probably the most uh, optimal choice. Not going for anything greedy. I'd like to see him make fast BKB, but I guess that might not be an option as Cindy's going to be silenced. But Fear is going to pick up the regen rune. And now we, I think uh, they're doing the smart move knowing that Demon is out of the picture. They're going to try to apply some pressure, but it looks like EG, they're getting position to defend this. Yeah. Um, there you go, Demon picks up his uh, Necro 2. Pops a smoke and he's lo going to start a fight. Uh, Meanwhile, the entirety of Navi is trying to take down this one tier, this tier one top. Very defensive tombstone drop by Melk Chronosphere, but it looks like Void actually rises. I can't actually do anything. Ice Path's gonna fly in. Beat is taking a bunch of damage. Can they kill him? Yes, they do. Light of Heaven tends to take the ball to me well, but here comes Demon, and Jail is on a rampage with that God Strength going. Gonna catch a Vost. And Avos is going to take the fall as well. Three for one. Only Jakiro took the fall. Meanwhile, Clinks was able to clean up Puppy on the backside. And man, Navi just getting completely torn apart in these team fights. Um, I was about to go over what Navi could try to do to get back in this <laughs> game, but uh, now it, this, with this tier two being threatened, it's looking very, very grim. What they can do is pray that all of EG's computers burst into flames. <laughs> so that they all disconnect and they have to just remake the game in its entirety. Yep, as Jail is just like, alright, I have Aegis, just, just gonna push in. Aegis about to time out, but it probably won't even matter. Shackle Shot starting Jail in place, but uh, Mel can drop another tombstone, again very defensively. Uh, doesn't want to get picked off easily by the Wolves. But the tower will take the fall, and EG just gonna back off saying that, alright, JO's Aegis about to time out. No, it might just have been a trap, as uh, Navi knows that without Tombstone, this is probably the time to fight. Melk is just gonna give up his life for the team, uh, like a true captain. Actually, he lived. Where'd he go? <laughs> no, he just ran back the other way. I just missed he just, him. He is going to Fountain. 
<laughs> he is going to Fountain, he just got a little confused. Oh, meanwhile, Dendi does pick off the JL. Nicely done by Dendi. Beat is getting a beautiful macro ice path combination as Beastmaster did kill out of Evan. But here comes Puppy and Dendi. This is what Nali is waiting for. And this is how they're going to get themselves back in the game as Dendi gets a double kill. Uh, meanwhile, Demon on the backside with the Necro 3. Be able to pick up a double kill, but Dendi with a triple kill. That is definitely going to go a long way to get Nali back in this game. And more importantly, it's going to allow Havos to hopefully finish his battle fairy relatively soon. Uh, yeah, how is he sitting on that? So he is basically 500, well, 450 gold from finishing that. So he's very, very close. And with that, we'll hopefully see that he'll start getting a very fast Manta or something like that up. Give him some great items so then he can actually start contributing and pulling his team back into this game. We do see the Yasha finished on uh, Dendi. So hopefully he can get that uh, Manta up fast as well. And then the Orchid kind of will be relegated to... Uh, Light of Heaven, and uh, Arzart. Yep, as uh, Havost, apparently lagging, is going to reconnect from the game. Uh, even though this is a land tournament, they are planning on the online servers, so hopefully Vav will get that fixed or implemented as soon as possible. But meanwhile, it looks like uh, Sven going for Mask and Madness, Demon, of course, Fish, and Necro 3. Fear going for whatever the heck he wants, as he has 4.2k gold in the bank. Pretty much can do as he pleases. Malk with the Mecha. Beat is with not too much, but he's doing his job. Yeah, um, he's playing that hard support, so it's not surprising to see him with no items. Uh, yep, and meanwhile, Light of Heaven almost finishing his mecha, and what Navi need to do is they need to get the Chronosphere or a Shackle Shot off onto Undying Omine's presence on Tifa entirely, and then just try to focus down on Jail or Fear. Probably Jail. But J.O. is so tanky, so they might have to go for fear. And if they do that, I think they have a good shot at winning a team fight, And that's what they really need to do. They're not going to try to get... They have solid ganking heroes, but the map control just limits them so hard from ganking anybody without devoting so much resources to Smoker to see. And EG will know to keep together. So they're going to have to really rely on their team fights, Chronosphere, and Shackle Shot uh, in order to really get themselves back in game. But if there's a team that can do that, uh, aside from, I guess, you know, the top Chinese teams, it is Navi. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, we've got Navi in uh, rough spots like this. I don't know if I've seen them quite this bad, but they've definitely been in rough uh, situations before. And they, you know, you don't become a world-class championship team by not knowing how to get, you know, uh, get yourself back into the game. Uh, you're right. They will have to really rely on that Chronosphere and the Shackles and uh, the Swap even to allow them to pick off those high priority targets and immediately start the fight in their favor. If they can eliminate that Flesh Golem uh, damage amp, if they can eliminate the Tombstone right off the bat, then they can start uh, trying to pick off the huge sources of damage. Uh, Jakiro will be a little bit of an annoyance, um, but really Macropire is... it's alright, But ice and Ice Path will happen maybe once, but for the most part they should be able to just chase down uh, whoever they want if they can get rid of that Undying very quickly. Yep, so Melk going to be under a lot of pressure. Has 100 HP, and that will go up when he gets Decay. Has Mechanism, so he won't get bursted on too easily, um, especially since Havos doesn't really have too many I'm to speak of. But uh, Dendi has been putting in some work. Uh, going to have to rely, again, a lot on Dendi, the Chrono, and the Shackle Shot. But we'll see how that shapes up. Meanwhile, Puppy, at least his face, the Vlad's not yet even level 11, so that's not boning too well for the Lycanthrope. And like throw he is best at split pushing, but he's not going to get a chance to do that this game at all, unless uh, they win a massive team fight. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you're right. Normally, you see like will pick up some cheap damage items, something like the medallion to allow to amplify their damage, and then go for something like a necro three and just try and push side lanes. But when you're behind like this, you can't be doing that, especially when all you've only taken one tower. If it was down to like tier twos for both teams, then I would say it's still a possibility, but at this point they're so far behind and EG has such map control that you cannot even remotely try that. It's basically a death sentence to try and uh, go alone. Yep, but Arzar doing his best to keep up with the warning and Arzar is smoked up as uh, a boast is going to be the bait in the situation. He's going to have the battle fairy delivered to him. Um, I'd rather see Navi take a defensive team fight rather than going for an aggressive team fight, but maybe they feel like they have no choice. They might have a better read of the game situation, but they're going to try to get the tower 
can they do that? EG might just let it fall. They are going to let it fall. And Navi just has to get the heck out of there. And they are. Yeah, Havos picks up the last hit on that one. They've got some illusions. Keeping an eye on EG for them. And they're taking the small wins. You know, you take the small victories and turn them into a big one. Unless you're Puppy, and then you stick around when you know that the entire team is there and farm one neutral. <laughs> yep, Puppy, uh, definitely rely on that Lycan Throw Ultimate to get him out of trouble. As uh, Fear does spy a wild Dendi with his little eye, has the Demon Edge, so is going for the greedy MKB build, because, you know, uh, Chrono won't really help him. And Dendi, will he get caught out of position by Fear? Here comes the Silence, or Demon does, or Dendi does have the Haste soon, as uh, Fear. Probably saw that in the bottle, but was hoping to pick him off. But nice juking by Dendi into the fog, and Dendi was able to escape. Yeah, great play. It was uh, very smart by Dendi to run into that those trees and kind of wiggle his way around. I mean, he did have refraction, I think. Uh, it was like up in two seconds or something like that. So he would have most likely been able to survive but that, uh, just because the orchid only lasts a few seconds. But... It just shows kind of the situation that EG's in already. They they don't care. They are just going to roam around and pound you in the face if they see you. They have really no fear. No, they have fear, dude. What are you talking about? Uh, they have one fear, and he has no fear. <laughs> no, he fears <laughs> darkness, so, you know, that's the only fear he has. Yeah. Fear of darkness. But, uh, I mean, Navi is in a, a place where they can't go alone, but at the same time, they almost have to go alone because they have so many people that are trying to get farm up. Uh, you can't have like a, a Void, a Lycan, and a uh, Templar all fighting over the same jungle creeps. Like, you're going to have to split up a little bit, and that's when EG is going to start uh, picking you off. They are hanging around the Roshan pit. They know exactly when it's going to be coming up, and that's going to be another easy Aegis, Aegis for them. Yeah. Uh, Ichi, though, they're not out of the woods yet. They do have to make their move soon. Void will just rip through them if it allows to go too far. As uh, Vos going for a BKB, trying to go for the next team fight rather than going for even more greedily. Uh, but Ichi do have to make their move soon. Um, but it looks like they're going to do that. Who picked up the Aegis? It was Fear. Yeah, Fear. And he's got the yeah. MKB up. And that is EG's cue to push in. Oh, yeah, that for sure. This is going to be kind of the push to end the game. You're right, they do have to uh, make their move very quickly here because the unfortunate thing about going for pretty much a purely mid-game uh, lineup is past that like 30 minute, like 30 to 35 minute mark, uh, your lineup really do a whole lot. Um, and it's just a matter of time, especially with the Battle Fury up, that uh, Havost is going to get his farm up. If you just let him and leave him alone, he's eventually just going to show up to a team fight and have a full build and rip your entire team in half. Unfortunately for Vost, uh, he stole 1,100 gold from finishing that BKB, so he's going to have to be without it. Uh, meanwhile, Navi, are they just going to do a tower trade and say, all right, take our bottom racks, you know, we're not going to defend it anyway. We still have our tier 2 on the other lane, so you can't kill any other racks. And looks like that is what they're going to do. Uh, they know that they can't fight this team fight, and they know EG can't push any other racks unless they go for straight throne. So Navi... Uh, Making interesting decision, but probably the best decision in this case. But they're gonna have to watch for watch out for the throne, and that is what Fear is gonna go for. Yeah, it's one of those things. Okay, fine. You you aren't gonna stop us when we go to take a free barracks. We we'll just try and win the game. But we do see see some TPs back, and EG is just gonna back off. They said, ah, oh, we took uh, barracks. It's fine. We can just go farm the jungle a bit, get another tier 2, uh, further expand our lead. Yep, but the, those two tier 2 towers uh, did allow Havos to pick up the BKB and allowed the Templar Assassin to finish the Manta style. Uh, but will that be enough? Again, Void lacking dearly in terms of attack speed and pretty much uh, just, he's doing a decent amount of damage. Um, Meanwhile, Venge still yet to hit level 11, and level 11 is pretty much the crucial level for Venge in order to really have that swap going. Uh, so we'll see how EG decides to do this. Uh, looks like they're going to group up and push the bottom lane so they can apply a lot of pressure on both of the side lanes. Yeah, we do see the MKB finished and another 1500 gold already saved up on Fear. And with that Aegis, he can pretty much go for another damage oriented item. 
go for maybe like a Crystalis right away, get himself some crits, and just further enhance his ability to tear through this team. Unfortunately for Navi, they're gonna have to defend this next Vex. There's no uh, way they can kill a tier 3 or even the tier 2 on the top lane before EG pushes in. Uh, Dendi does have a TP. Navi is gonna probably back off. Yeah, they are gonna back off and get in position. They're gonna have to fight this. And this is gonna be the team fight that decides the game as Fear or Jay are already going to town with that BKB. And Mask of Madness as Sasha Gray only catches one nice spread out by EG. What awesome positioning. Unfortunately, Jay does take the fall. Sasha Gray under a lot of pressure. Vosta is gonna have to back off. Possibly KB still at half HP as looks like a uh, puppy is forced to retreat as well. Undying just too powerful in this scenario and Fear just so much damage. And Fear should try to take out the bottom Rex. Legged Throw Ultimate is going to run out very, very soon. They killed Sven for just Avenge. A nice trade, but Light of Heaven does take the fall afterwards. And Navi looks like, unfortunately, they couldn't get the items up they needed in order to try to defend this Rex. Uh, Dendi going to try to kill off Demon Demon. Just go Scepter's way. And Havost and the whole Navi squad are going to be on their tree. And this is looking to be GG. Yeah, unfortunately... When they got that second set of barracks, it's one of those things they, yeah, there you go, GG is called. Uh, you can't sit there and farm for that long. So EG with, I would say, the upset of the tournament. Knocking Na'Vi out in a fairly decisive 2-0 victory. Yeah, definitely completely unexpected. I heard, I think Na'Vi even boot camped for this tournament. Um, I think they have a house, I'm not too sure. Or they ran out someplace for her. Training, but they did boot camp for this tournament. And when Navi boot camps, uh, well, apparently their boot camp for TI3 was really bad, but uh, the Dream Hack curse will live on for another season. As Navi gonna bow out in the quarterfinals, allowing EG to move on to the semifinals. And uh, since it's probably the last series we're gonna cast in this tournament, EG made it up to the grand finals, won game one, and then got switched to the main stage where they were defeated by the Swedish home crowd and no Tide Hunter. So unfortunately, the Americans could not win their tournament, uh, but still, they put on a very impressive performance. Yeah, yeah, I mean, especially when you, if you look six months back at, like, the International 2, uh, EG seemed very uh, awkward. They didn't really have a solid game plan a lot of the times. So it's great to see that they managed to pull it together, get second place at DreamHack. Uh, and I think that this is kind of the... the I wouldn't say slap in the face, but the smack that Navi needs every so often. Just to allow, you know, remind themselves that they need to actually take this game seriously sometimes. They can't always just go for trollsy, like, pick sniper mid. Um, and it'll, I, I can pretty much guarantee you that in the next couple tournaments that we see Navi in, they will be in stellar form. Yep, but it is nice to see, uh, you know, Navi just winning every Western tournament and hopefully see more competition against the Eastern teams to defeat our Chinese overlord friends as Easy is going to take this in again, decisive factor. I think the fact that it's so decisive is really going to rub Navi the wrong way. I can't say, all right, you got to the late game, we made one mistake. Uh, that's what caused us. These were decisive defeats, so that reveals a flaw. And this game, this series, I think, underlies the importance of support pickups, because Avenge and Wisp pretty much did nothing in their games. Yeah. As, uh, I think this guy called did get disconnected, or it bugged out. Like, Jakiro are picked up for a reason. Uh, can you repeat that? The Skype just went a little bit haywire at the end. Oh, I just said, like, it, people say that, you know, Oh, you, pay, you see certain mid lanes or carries picked up for a reason. Well, it's the, it goes the same for supports. I mean, you see Jakiro all the time for, you know, for a reason. You see uh, others, like the Chen for a reason, because they are effective at what they do. They aren't very pigeonholed into a certain situation. Yeah, Venge a little bit too late game, Wisp a little bit too gank oriented, and uh, that did cost Navi, as uh, ours are definitely probably the highest caliber support in the western scene will definitely uh, get his days back up if Puffy allows him to get the supports that he wants. So I'm not really too worried on that account. But EG again does take the quarterfinal victory. Got second place at DreamHack. Go American Dodo as uh, this has been Bivon from DodoCarters.com. Follow me YouTube, YouTube.com slash Bivon773 Twitch.tv slash Bivon773 um, 
once I get to 4K subs, I'll be seeing a funny video, Drunk Tastic Adventure. And meanwhile, you can find Blightwind on Ghost of Gators on that twitch.tv slash Blightwind and youtube.com slash description, as it'll be in the below, <laughs> description below. Any last words? Uh, no, uh, I just want to say thank you very much uh, for having me on here. It's always nice to, as a start, you know, a new starting caster, to run into other more popular casters who are willing to take you on, help you out, get you some more viewers, and use kind of the popularity they've already established to propel people. And I, it just shows that the esports community is very helping and will continue to grow, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. Yep, so definitely help out Blightwind as uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you guys next time. Uh, see you later.